Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So today I set up my camera, I got my work clothes on, and I started my fall cleanup in my cut flower garden. You can see what an absolute mess this cut flower garden became. After we had our heat wave in September, everything kind of just started suffering. My cosmos died, my asters died, my zinnias died, and I kind of just left it all for the birds. The birds have been absolutely enjoying all the seeds that have been left over, but it's time to start cleaning it all up, getting these old plants out, and getting the new ones in. I am planning on planting out my cool flower method seedlings end of October, early November, so the clock is ticking. It is time to get this bed turned over, the birds have had their fill, and it's time to get everything cleaned out. So you can see I'm pulling out these huge zinnia plants, all the stuff, and I'm putting them on the street. I am so lucky where I live, certain times of the year they do street green waste pickup, where all the residents can just pile their green waste into a pile in the street, and then about once a week, once every other week, there's a whole schedule, they will come and they will pick up this big pile. It makes cleanup so incredibly easy, I can't imagine doing it any other way. Here I wanted to show you all my sunflowers. I This was such a fail this year and I am not sure why. And it wasn't just this spot, it was pretty much every spot. Look at the sunflower right there. It grew to only a couple feet tall and then it just died. I just don't know what's going on. I'm hoping to get this soil tested in here to see if there's nitrogen deficiency or maybe it was just a bad year for sunflowers. Right here, I'm pulling out a pro-cut plum. That's in my hand right there. That's a pro-cut plum sunflower. Those are supposed to be huge and it just didn't work this year. What did work was this prairie sun rudbeckia. I actually planted these seedlings last fall. So November 2021 is when I put them in and they have been blooming their heads off. Now underneath all these plants, look at all the weeds <laughs> that has come. So about halfway through the summer, I kind of gave up on weeding and I was just letting the big plants just kind of crowd everybody out. But you can see I have little seedlings. I have Cosmo seedlings they're all over the place. Sometimes I have a really hard time getting rid of perfectly good plants like this red spike amaranth. This plant is so gorgeous right now. It is in its prime and I cannot even show you guys across camera how beautiful the color of this amaranth is. So I had to try and save it. I was hoping that I could dry it. So I grabbed one of the biggest vases I had trying to dry this massive amaranth in there but you can see it was so top heavy I was having the hardest time getting this vase to stand up straight so I knew it wasn't going to work but I went through and I harvested all this amaranth with the goal to put it in a little arrangement and dry it. Now last year I dried emerald tassels and coral fountain amaranth which is kind of the trailing kind it kind of hangs down and that kind I think you can dry upright like this no problem because it's gonna hang down and it's gonna look beautiful however this red spike kind the spiky kind of amaranth I really think that you need to dry it upside down I made that mistake right here and I just wanted to tell you all that this didn't work at all at the time that I'm recording this which is only about a day and a half after I did this arrangement it's already kind of wilted down and it looks it looks terrible <laughs> so I wish I could go back to this time right here and tell myself to hang this amaranth upside down in the garage because that's the way that it would dry really well and hold its shape like this. Um, even though it looks absolutely gorgeous as I'm arranging it right here, it just didn't last after a day. It kind of melted down and just doesn't look as good as it did right here. But I had to show you all this. Doesn't it look absolutely beautiful? I'm telling you, the color is it's like a fluorescent red. It's so, so gorgeous and eye-catching.
So my next task was removing all the drip irrigation tubing that I have in this cut flower garden. This drip tubing is about two years old and it was doing okay. However, I could tell that I did have some areas where the emitters must have been plugged with hard water or soil or something. It was very um, not consistent and I could tell that some plants were getting too much water and some plants weren't getting enough water. So I knew this year that I was gonna completely replace it and put all new drip tubing down and I figured this was the perfect time to do it. So how I put in drip tubing in this cut flower garden is on each long side, I have half inch tubing, a big tube down the long sides and then a grid pattern with quarter inch emitter tubing with emitters every six to 12 inches depending on what plant I had chose to plant there. It's worth worked really well. I think it just has to be replaced ever so often. So after I got most of that out, I got about half of the cut flower garden, um, the tubing out, I started taking out the big roots from the amaranth and, you know, from the different plants that had been in there all year. So I started pulling those out and then taking out all the weeds. I am planning to till up this area and put in some more compost. So technically, I guess I could till in the weeds. However, I didn't want weed seeds in there. I also didn't want uh, old seeds from the cut flowers I have because I noticed that I have a lot lot of little seedlings coming up, um, you know, and I want to do a little bit less weeding. So after I got most of that, you can see I really only am focusing on about half of the cut flower, flower garden at this point, just because time is becoming an issue. How I normally handle gardening projects is I will give myself a project and I will work until it's done. And that can mean one hour or it can mean five hours. And that just doesn't work for my lifestyle anymore. I've decided to limit myself to a certain amount of time. And if I don't get the project done, that's okay. I can finish it the next day. Let me know how you all handle getting things done in your garden, whether you finish the whole project or you give yourself a certain amount of time. So here here I wanted to show you all the soil in this cut flower garden. It looks really, really good. I'm proud of it. I keep adding compost to it and I'm going to keep adding compost to it. Due to time constraints, I didn't get around to removing my dahlias, which I think is a good thing because this one is still blooming its head off. I also didn't take out my ornamental broom corn, but because I did cut the drip to it, it's going to start drying and it's going to start taking on that wheat color so that I will be able to cut it and use it for decoration for Halloween and for the fall season. You can see how I clamped off the drip irrigation there and then when I'm ready to add new drip, I will just connect it to that spot. I wanted to show you my green waste from today. It doesn't look like much. However, if I stand next to it, the pile goes up to my thigh. So thank goodness I didn't have to try and stuff that into my green waste bin. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was motivating for you and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today. Mm -hmm.